I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Tron Black, the developer from Ravencoin. Tron, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, uh, hi Ashton. Thanks for, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. You're very welcome. I'm excited to learn a little bit about Ravencoin. The first time that I had heard of Ravencoin was because it was all over social media that everybody was mining Ravencoin. Um, is it an easy coin to mine or was it lucrative or is it lucrative to mine and why did it get so popular? Uh, it has been lucrative. Uh, I believe it is lucrative now. We changed an algorithm uh, to remove some of the ASICs, so it should be lucrative now. Um, it can be mined by anyone with the GPU. Originally, you could mine it with the CPU, but the GPUs came in uh, about three weeks into it. And uh, yes, yeah, should, should be should be lucrative for GPU miners, which is mostly you know just a gaming rig or a machine you throw a bunch of video cards in. Mm -hmm. Great. And for people that aren't familiar with Ravencoin, I know that it's based off of Bitcoin's code base, but it, you've added in a bunch more functions. One of them allowing you to create your own coins and, and from the blockchain. Could you explain a little bit more about why you chose to base it off Bitcoin and what is better than Bitcoin? Sure. Uh, so yeah, Bitcoin is just a really, really solid uh, code base. So we started with that. Uh, we, we did a, a code fork, not a, not a chain fork, but a code fork of Bitcoin. And we added a few things. Uh, we increased the issuance schedule. So it's 21 billion with a B uh, coins. Uh, we increased the uh, block uh, the block issuance. So instead of 10 minutes, it's every one minute. And uh, we added the ability to create assets, which is probably its most important feature. So the ability to create your own token. Uh, and we increased the block size as well. So it's mm -hmm. two megabyte blocks instead of one. Very interesting. So it's and 20x as fast as Bitcoin. Okay. A lot of people want to do similar things to Bitcoin, uh, but they're afraid that either increasing the block size or making it confirm transactions faster is going to increase centralization um, or, you know, be the downfall of Bitcoin. Did you guys think right. um, of that, of yeah. those issues or what people would think of when you changed the code base with Ravencoin? Absolutely. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I was following those, those uh, debates for, for two years. I actually know where they started, why they started, kind of where they ended up. Uh, uh, we, but we've also, you know, kind of analyzed the research of what it takes to uh, to uh, propagate a block across the network, uh, those speeds, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, we're well within the limits. Uh, it's been running for almost two years with no problems at all. Uh, the centralization thing, I think, is really related to kind of if, if the miners have to store a very, very large chain, uh, then they might not choose to do that right when they're mining. Uh, and, and so that can be a problem. Uh, but I mean, these days with you know a disk space, a terabyte of disk space being a you know fifty dollar hard drive from Costco, uh, really isn't that big a deal. Totally. And you guys have done something really interesting with the consensus algorithm for the people that are mining um, this X sixteen R, you know, as opposed to just yeah. basic proof of work. Could you talk a little bit about how you came up with this X sixteen R? Um, what makes it so uh, interesting for the miners to mine, and and why people are preferring that? Sure. Yeah. So, so the goal uh, with it was actually to make, uh, well, we had to do two things. We had to have a new algorithm because we didn't want to launch a new baby chain where it could be dominated by, you know, uh, SHA-256 ASIC miner. So that was, that was, you know, one initial goal. And the other one was to, to kind of keep ASICs at bay, meaning we really didn't want, you know, custom hardware that could dominate, you know, that does lead to centralization, typically big, you know, the thing centralizes. Uh, so we, we basically, one of the ideas uh, from Bruce Fenton was to change the algorithm uh, like every month or something. He said, well, the problem with that, if you just completely change the algorithm, there's not miners for it, then you'd lose all the security that you had built up. Uh, so anyway, we were having this discussion uh, with Joel Wade. He's a CTO at Managed Ventures. And what we came up with was a, a way to, to change the algorithm, uh, not just every month, but every block. But basically, by uh, reordering the algorithms, the order that it goes through, the hashes go through the algorithms based on the previous block, which everybody has to know anyway. Otherwise, they can't attach that block to the next uh, next part. So we take take the last eight bytes uh, of, the, of the previous block, which is essentially random because it was what the mount miners found last block. And we chop that up into 16 pieces. So each one being four bits, which is 16 choices. 
And so then we take 16 of those choices and take 16 algorithms. So you kind of, it makes it random. And so we, we force the hash to a hash to a hash through that, uh, in that order. And so it changes every block. Um, and then we had uh, recently, meaning kind of last summer, we had some ASICs that did show up. And so we, we decided to uh, make another change. So right now we're running X16 R V2, where we just added some, uh, basically tiger hash to some of those just to kind of obsolete the existing hardware. Hmm. Okay. So people that are mining, so with this consensus algorithm, it's supposed to be more decentralized in one of the main senses is that people can't use ASICs to sort of control more of the network. Um, are there Correct. still mining pools like in Bitcoin where there's a, you know, a, yeah. there's four or five different major groups that control it? Um, and then how easy is it to to try and take control or do a Sybil attack or a 51% attack on Ravencoin? Yeah, it'd be it'd be pretty tough at, at times. We've been between the fourth fourth most, most difficult and the sixth most, most difficult uh, coin to attack, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, we have, you know, the, the mining distribution is AC or is a GPU. So those are kind of distributed worldwide. So we don't have a large pools of farms. Uh, the pools are also pretty well distributed. We have lots of pools, um, some that we know about, some that are, uh, you know, are hidden. We don't know the names of them, but they're, you know, they have small percentages. So there's graphs that kind of show what our, what our mining pool distribution is. And it's, uh, it's pretty good. Hmm. Very interesting. And uh, although you guys are based off Bitcoin's code base, you changed a lot of the uh, the block sizes and the times and stuff. But because of this X16R consensus algorithm, it's not as centralized and um, as Bitcoin, um, and and it also doesn't have the scalability issues that we see in Bitcoin, where you know there's can only so much can be in a block, and you have to wait ten minutes. Yep. There's a huge backlog of transactions, and a lot of people it's not really feasible to pay for a coffee or to pay with something with Bitcoin because you have to wait a long time for confirmations. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the scalability with Ravencoin? Um, is it anywhere near where you would consider needing to up it um, or is it infinitely scalable and there will be no problem with the throughput as people use yeah. the transactions in their day-to-day -day life? Yeah, I wish I could say it was infinitely scalable, but it's not, none of them are. Um, it's 20x the capacity of Bitcoin. Uh, and we can add to it from there. I don't think we're at the limits of what we can scale to uh, just by increasing a block size that, you know, that kind of thing or speeding something up. Um, there are limits though uh, mm -hmm. to all of these and it's how fast you can propagate the block and that's multiplied. So it's a combination of both both the, the block time, which we've made 10X and the block size, which we've made 2X. So that's mm -hmm. where we get the 20, 20X scalability. It runs just fine. Um, there's There's other... Uh, experiments and other projects out there that are running at higher capacities from that. So those are things we can learn from and kind of know what the what the actual scalability limits are. Um, as much as people tend to hate it, uh, Bitcoin SD is one that's kind of pushing the limits on on what's possible. And so you know we we basically can learn from that and see what mm -hmm. see what's possible. Definitely. And you mentioned one of the other things that's different than Bitcoin is that you can create your own assets. And that seems huge yeah. for business adoption um, and yep. being able to create tokens similar to how Ethereum has grown the whole cryptocurrency industry with the ability to easily create assets. Can you talk a bit a little bit about that part so far? Um, are there people creating yeah. Ravencoin assets? Is it helping with the adoption? Yeah, so uh, that was its original purpose. I mean, that's why we built it was to build a build a platform for creating assets. Uh, we took the if if people are familiar, or viewers are familiar with either Counterparty, ERC twenty, uh, uh, Mastercoin, uh, Open Assets, any of those. Uh, so really, there were some that were built on top of Bitcoin. We basically integrated the kind of the capabilities of those two together, and then we were able to remove some of the I'll call it just clunkiness that that came from having a second layer. Um, and so, yeah, people have created assets. Uh, we're, uh, over 20,000 assets have been created by different people. Um, they have to have a unique unique name. So some people, I think, are just uh, kind of name squatting on the assets. But there's also uh, real projects that are, uh, you know, that have created uh, tokens that represent various things. Uh, there's ones that rep represent wine futures. And that's uh, wine that's in the barrel that's not ready to drink and is aging. Uh, and so those tokens represent that. Uh, that's Vincent uh, dot wine that, that has that. Um, and there's there's a bunch of projects. The uh, best way to find them is is our Raven Wiki. Just look up Raven Raven Wiki, and we've got the projects that we kind of know about. We don't, you know, nobody has to ask us permission to create an asset and mm -hmm. do stuff. So we probably don't know about all of them. 
uh, but people are creating assets and the one we do know about, we put on the Raven Wiki. So, and if you want to go to ravencoin.asset-explorer.com, mm. uh, then you can see all the assets that are created. And because we have a, another capability that ERC20 doesn't have, which is the ability to uh, attach metadata or the information about what the token is for, in that explorer, if you see an IPFS link, you can click on that and it'll tell you, you know, it may, it may be something that's for sale. It may be a PDF of why the token exists. It might be a photograph. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but that data is immutably attached to the token itself. Hmm. Very cool. I didn't know there was 20,000 assets already. That sounds like it's yeah. growing nicely. Do you guys yeah. provide, is it just like assets or are there actually people creating full decentralized applications and you guys have SDKs and, and developer communities? How big does this get? Oh, we, we have... Yeah, we have a huge developer community. A lot, in fact, most of the work is actually done by the by the community. Uh, we have a Telegram; it's not run by us. Uh, we have Discord, not run by us. We we have all kind of all those things, Twitter and things like that. Um, very big community, huge community in South Korea. I went to a, a huge event in South Korea. It was, it was a meetup of uh, over a thousand people with a waiting list to get in the venue because they filled it up. Uh, really popular over there. Um, uh, yeah, people are building second tier stuff. We're helping to build second tier stuff, meaning the APIs, the explorers, all of those exist. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot, lot going on that's kind of outside of just like the core protocol that we're working on. That's great. And I read on the site that, you know, it's open source, community driven, sort of all the attributes you would want of a fully decentralized project. Um, yeah, it, we didn't raise any money. Uh, so we didn't do an ICO. Uh, it's all every Raven has been mined into existence from day one. Uh, no developer set aside, no pre mine, no master node that's paying developers or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a very uh, generous backer in Medici Ventures, which is owned uh, by Overstock.com, the, the, uh, you know, the furniture retailer, online retailer, and they're backing uh, Raven Coin. Just just some developers are working on the core protocol. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you that, um, you know, about like a Ravencoin foundation um, that's able to sustain yeah. itself and to continue growing. Um, you know, so is there financial incentive um, and a return for Medici and, and Overstock to to inject capital into Ravencoin? I, I think Over, Overstock or Medici owns some tokens, uh, but uh, there is no foundation yet. Um, there is talk uh, in the community of the community actually forming a foundation just to be able to kind of make sure that we have, uh, I don't know, just a place for people to come and, and to you know, kind of talk about and think about and vote on or whatever kind of future things. But it's not something that we've set up at, at this time. Yeah. yeah. And we're just working on the software. It totally. And how f far along would you say in terms of, you know, fully ready for the public is the software. I know you've already been working on it for two years, but like, is there yeah. a bunch of things in the development uh, roadmap that are really big that are still coming out in 2020 or what are you guys working on? Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few things coming out. It's fully baked for Raven and it's trading on, you know, like 40 different exchanges and, and all of that kind of thing. So the part that works like Bitcoin, like a currency or whatever, that that's fully baked. Uh, creating your own asset, creating you know the metadata about what your asset is, being able to create it on your own. You pay 500 Raven, create your own asset. Fully baked, been working since November 5th of last year. And it works great. 20,000 plus tokens have been created. You can go you know see all of those or and see what they're about. Uh, there are a few more features that we're adding that are on testnet now. They're uh, I would say they're fully done, but uh, need more testing. About a month's worth of testing. We're going to run a bounty program just to let more eyeballs look at it, but that's messaging, the ability for the issuer to send a message to their token holders. Memos, which is the ability to put information, large pieces of information, like an entire document with every transfer of an asset or of Raven. Uh, tags and restricted assets, which is really more for compliance if you're creating like a securities token and you need to make sure that this thing isn't moving uh, into places that we, you don't have KYC or accredited and might, you, you as an issuer might be violating rules. We have a tool set that's being added uh, into it. Uh, we wanted to do it second layer, but there's certain things like the ability to restrict the transfer to tagged addresses mm -hmm. that we couldn't do second layer because once you had it, you could transfer. It's just the way Bitcoin works and the way it's our tokens work. So we're adding this kind of additional feature and then people can layer on top of that for all kinds of different things like voting and stuff. Hmm. Very cool. And what would you say is one of Ravencoin's biggest needs right now uh, in terms of the growing, is it more developers, more strategic partners, or just more people to actually use Ravencoin and use the assets? 
Yeah, I would say one thing that we don't have uh, because of the way we were launched and we didn't do an ICO, uh, we don't have a marketing department. So this type of thing right here is how people find out about it. Um, it's a great issuance platform if you if you are looking at doing, you know, kind of an STO or an IEO or something like that uh, to be able to issue your own token on it. Mm -hmm. or check with your attorneys about you know kind of the reason and rules and things around doing that. You know, I don't want to get any trouble, but but. Um, it's, it's a great platform that will help you stay compliant uh, with those rules. So it's, it's, you know, that's what we're building in now is that capability. And I think that's what people are waiting for. So it will compete with kind of the other platforms out there that, that help you stay compli compliant. Awesome. And if people are interested in that kind of stuff, what's the best way to start following along and get involved or just learn more about it when, when that comes out? Yeah, so uh, ravencoin.org and the Raven Wiki are kind of the two main places. Uh, from there, you can jump to the Discord, the Telegram. There's you know sub chat, you know sub uh, you know channels within that. If you're interested in specifically in in mining or issuance or tokens or or whatever, there's people in there to help you. The community is amazing, friendly. Uh, you know, we, there's been kind of like you know fights in some of the other communities. This one's been pretty open and, and super helpful. It's it's almost like the early days of Bitcoin where people were like, oh yeah, let me tell you about this kind of thing. So it's great. That's great to hear. Well, I'll leave those links in the description box below. And that's all the time that we appreciate have it. today, Tron. But I appreciate you taking the time to talk about Ravencoin. And I'm looking forward to following up in the near future. All right. Thanks, Ashton. Appreciate it.